Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pokemon Trainer Evan YouTube channel. I am so thankful for you guys for coming in. I'm your host, Evan Davies, and today we are going to be ranking all mainline starters throughout the Pokemon franchise. Uh, obviously, starters are our first introduction to the game, and so I thought that was apropos to start uh, some different content on the channel with some starter rankings. I'm a big fan of rankings, so I thought I'd start there. Uh, today, as I'm going through, when I'm ranking these Pokemon, I'm going to be thinking on three main things. I'm going to be thinking, one, on appearance, especially since they're starters. I think it's apropos to do that as well because that's your first appeal is how visually they're intriguing to you. Um, two, I'm going towards um, evolutionary lines. That major theme throughout Pokemon of growth is so important to a starter Pokemon. And so I think you have to take that into play. Um, you can see on screen now that there are more than just the starters. I'm not going to be going through all the evolutions just yet. Um, I think we're going to save that for another day. But this is the best tier maker I could get uh, for the time frame that I had to pull this one off. So uh, we're only going the starters. And third, the last thing, it's not... My main thing, but I'm going to personal preferences, personal biases, biases, and just specialty notes and design notes that don't automatically hit you straight from the appearance, but they are included, and just really cool notes that I think are worth really to touch on. With that being said, though, you're here for content, so let's get to these rankings. So obviously, you see Bulbasaur at the start. I feel we got to start Gen 1, and with... Pokemon number one. So I'm going to go here. I have Bulbasaur at a high A. I love Bulbasaur. What is Bulbasaur? You don't know. Is it a toad? Is it a frog? Is it a dinosaur? Is it an onion? Is it a plant of some kind? You don't know, which immediately hits that theme of Pokemon that it's a pocket monster. You're not sure exactly what Bulbasaur is, but you know he's your friend. One of the beautiful things about Pokemon is while Sugimori and the rest of his team over at the Pokemon Company are designing Pokemon, they always have the thought process of a Pokemon should always be look as though it could be your friend. And I adore that. Bulbasaur looks like it could be your friend. And it's visually interesting with the speckles and the spots and the bulbed back, but it's not too overpowering. It's a perfect blend. I think Bulbasaur is in A. We're going to continue on to Charmander here. I have Charmander at a B. I like Charmander. Charmander was the one starter I started with when I got Pokemon Red all the way back in the day as a child. I do like Charmander. I just don't think it's as visually interesting as Bulbasaur. And I think it's a little too on the nose with the design. And when it comes to evolutions, I like evolutionary lines that look of growth not necessarily of crazy changes um i did enjoy digimon as a kid but it always drove me crazy the uh you know when those creatures changed they'd be incredibly different i, I like that pokemon tends to do a little bit more of growth that's my style that i like so with that being said i that's why i go with that but Charmander's a little on the nose. <clears throat> and I do fall into the category that some people do of, I have Charizard fatigue. Charizard is a great Pokemon. No doubt about it. But I just think it's not, it's not the greatest thing in the world like some people treat it to be. So Charmander is brought down by that for me. Otherwise, it's a fun guy. You get a good energy off of Charmander. It has an appeal I currently downloaded a lot of the older games onto the computers I have at work for my after school kids. And almost every time that we're playing Gen 1, they, they take Charmander. So I get it. There's an appeal for a child there um, specifically, but it's an appeal for everyone. Just not my cup of tea right now. Continuing to Squirtle. I have Squirtle in an A. I love Squirtle. I think Squirtle gets unnecessary heat for no reason. Uh, you know, as a kid, it was ironic. I would have went... Charmander, Squirtle, Bulbasaur would have been my rankings going, you know, in a downward trajectory. Now it's completely reversed. I go Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmander. It's funny how cha taste changes. 
I think Squirtle is ingenious because you automatically get the notes of water without being hit over the head with it. Yes, it's easier because you don't immediately equate lizards or, I guess, frogs or dinosaurs with the two typings that they have, so they have to be a little bit more on the nose. Turtles definitely are associated with water, but the subtle notes with the color scheme, and I love the contrast, and just this subtle note, if you follow my cursor, with this little pattern of that looks a little bit like a wave on the tail, is just such a smart design choice that I really enjoy. And I think Blastoise and Wartortle definitely have some cool appeal to them that some of the others don't. Um, some of the other lines don't. So I, I think Squirtle's great. Uh, and, and I just love the little mischievous smile. It's got that smile of if you look back at your old yearbook of the kid in class that you knew was a bit of a clown and was going to get into trouble, but you, everyone kind of liked him. Squirtle's got that look, and I really enjoy that. So it has that friendly vibe, that appeal for someone. So I, I got Squirtle on it. Now, that's our three mainline Gen 1s, but we're going to continue with Pikachu and Eevee as they really do qualify as starters. Pikachu is an S. Pikachu is not my favorite Pokemon. I enjoy Pikachu. I have no beef with Pikachu. I don't love Pikachu like the rest of the world seemingly does. But with that being said, I can't argue that Pikachu is not <clears throat> near perfect. Pikachu is in the category of very, very few things that are so well designed, you cannot argue how brilliant they are. The rounded edges are so inviting and soft and make it friendly for everyone off the front of the design. And then off the back of the design, the hint of the lightning through the tail, you could say that's a little on the nose, but it's not clear thunderbolt or clear little sparks. It's in a tail with a zigzag pattern, and if there's contrast there, I think the appearance is so inviting and yet creates that energy that Pikachu has power to it. Pikachu has uh, an ability to fight, and there's a little bit of mystique there. I love that for Pikachu. So Pikachu is an S. Pikachu is just near perfect as a design. And ironically enough, I don't even think this is the best Pikachu design. My personal favorite is the really fat Pikachu from back in the day. That's actually my favorite. But this is still phenomenal. Um, next, we're going to go to Eevee. Eevee is also an S. Eevee's going to be brought up by this. I don't think of these designs, one could easily argue Eevee is the least of those. I would probably argue maybe not against Charmander, but of the four that I have up top, Eevee is far simpler and just very cutesy. It's clearly a cutesy fox or cutesy mammalian creature of some kind. But I love the note of the tail with that paintbrush look because it really gives the idea of possibility, that specialty note. And then evolutionary line, no one can argue evolutionary line over Eevee because the possibilities are endless. To evolve into eight Pokemon and hopefully in the future we get more official ones uh, you know, and me personally, I will be sharing some of my own personal Pokemon designs in the future on this channel and in my various other um, platforms. Eevee just creates the idea of possibility and the idea of growth is so inherent to Eevee that it has to be S tier from the evolutionary standpoint alone. And also it is one of the most adorable things you will ever find. If my wife finds out that I made this video and did not rank Eevee as my absolute favorite, she will punch me in the face. So, <laughs> like, it's just what it is. She adores Eevee, and she's one of the many people who does. But that's my Gen 1. Two S's, two A's, and a B. That's really well designed for one generation. Moving on to Gen 2. Gen 2 is my personal favorite generation, um, but I'm going to try to be as fair as I possibly can in some of this, even though I did say there will be personal bias. Chikorita, I have an A. I don't understand the hate for Chikorita. One could say it's a little on the nose, kind of like the fire tail with Charmander, with the leaf. But I like the little thorn spike necklace that it has, because it's the only hard edge surface on the entire thing, except these little bits of the eyes. And it just be is such a friendly, inviting Pokemon. And you don't know what Chikorita is 
But then through the character design or through the creature design, you have this seedling idea to a full-grown plant to a fully blooming plant with meganium, if you follow my cursor. I love that evolutionary line. And it's such an inviting thing. And yes, there is bias. Chikorita, my favorite, one of my favorite video games in general of all time is Pokemon Crystal. And Chikorita was my starter. But I played all three of those Gen 1, Gen 2 games when they came out. And I adored them all. And I had Cyndaquil in one, Totodile in one, Chikorita in the other. Chikorita is my personal favorite in there. But beyond that, I just like the design. And I think it gets a lot of hate for not a lot of reasons. So I'm going to give an A to Chikorita. Moving to Cyndaquil, I'm going straight back to A. I think Cyndaquil is a great design. Again, it's got those softer, inviting edges. It makes it feel friendly and inviting and not so intimidating. But then it's got that cool factor with the explosion. And I love the fact that it hints fire in a very different way than Charmander or a lot of other fire Pokemon do with the explosion back. I think it's great. Uh, I think Cyndaquil's line... One reason I'd have it lesser than some of these ones is just because I think Typhlosion is actually the worst of the three designs in the line. I like Typhlosion, but I think it actually peaks with Cool Lava down here. And so that's where I gotta say Cyndaquil it would be an A as opposed to going further. But Cyndaquil is great. And going on to Totodile, I might shock some people with this one. Totodile is an S. I think Totodile is phenomenal. And I love Totodile so much because I'm going to give you the same thing I gave with Cyndaquil. I think the Totodile line peaks with Totodile and Croconaw is different enough and cool enough that it's kind of an even playing field. And Frolligator is just kind of Frolligator. It doesn't go many different places. But yet, Totodile of these eight Pokemon that we have so far... Totodile has the best character design. And when I mean that, you get Totodile's vibe immediately from this drawing, and you don't get that from the other seven nearly as much. Look at how derpy and fun Totodile looks when it's just trying to look like it's trying to chomp something off. And I love that about Totodile. It's fun, and it's playful, and yet you're still like, oh, it's got those sharp teeth, it could do some damage, but it doesn't look as though... It's going to destroy anything. It's got straight, straight up starter energy. And I love it. So I'm Totodile is an absolute S for me. And you can see I'm a big Gen 2 fan. I get it. A lot of people would probably have these guys down in the B or C range. But two A's and an absolute S with Totodile. I think Gen 2 is phenomenal. Now moving on to Gen 3. Trico is an obvious one that everyone goes very high on. I will also go high on Trico. But I have Trico in the A category, and part of this is personal bias, but Trico, I think, of these Pokemon so far and the entire Gen 3 evol evolutionary starters has the biggest cool factor. Trico is just cool. And I also love the color scheme with that high contrast, that really bright lime green to the red I think that's really, really smart, and it's a different interpretation that they ever did at the time of a grass Pokemon. You know, it's clearly plant of some kind. Clearly plant of some kind. Trico has the hint of green through the color scheme, and a small, you could get leaf vibes from the tail. And then when you get to evolutions, my gosh. Sceptile, so cool. Grovile, cool factor. It's just a really cool line. I thought about... In the past, I would have thought about Trico as an S, but that's where, you know, the personal stuff comes in. I think they're great. I don't know what it is. It's just I don't think I can put them on that top. I can't put Trico at the top tier. But one thing I will say, going to the character design, I think this is the best regional design of almost any starter. And what I mean by that is, look at the variations of the green. There's this muted green here with Bulbasaur. There's this... More muted, it's lighter, but more muted green and Chikorita, where this hits you immediately and gives you that tropical vibe that Hoenn has. No Pokemon is a better advertisement to say, boom, you're somewhere new and this is what this region is all about, more than Hoenn, which I, more than Trico and Hoenn. So I love that about it. Which is the why, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh gosh, maybe Trico is an S. You know, 
Actually, you know what? I'm going to move that to S. I think by personal preference, I would have Trico more in A. But now that I think more design and appearance and specialty notes, that is such a unique thing for Trico to have. I have, I'll put Trico at S. Now we're going to Torchic. I'm going to probably upset some people. I'm going to have Torchic as a B. I don't get fire vibes from Torchic. I just get cutesy chicken. And I am not a big Blaziken fan. I like Combuskin, but I don't think Combuskin has a lot of appeal by itself unless you have a lot of history with the franchise. And so by that, I, I think Torchic's a B. I don't have a lot to say about Torchic. I think the color scheme is nice, but it doesn't scream fire to me. Where all these starters give me something to tell me that. And as an introductory Pokemon, I feel you need that. And Torchic doesn't really have that for me. Whereas going with Mudkip, I have Mudkip also at a B, but a higher B. I have I would have it above Charmander, um, which would be controversial to the Charizard factor, but that's where I, I am on Charmander more. Mudkip, I adore more than Charmander. And I think Swampert is a really unique one. The only reason Mudkip wouldn't be higher is I think Marsh Stomp, I ain't gonna lie, kind of sucks. <laughs> but Mudkip is such a fun inviting Pokemon and I think this is such a cool interpretation of an axolotl you know you know if you're one of my younger viewers and you don't know what an axolotl is please go look that up it's a really unique basis for a Pokemon and for this to be the interpretation and have some fun to it I think is great I love the color scheming here with the high contrast color variation between the orange and the blue I really like that for Mudkip, and I think Mudkip has some great energy. Also, if you have never read them, the Pokemon Adventures manga is absolutely phenomenal, and the Ruby and Sapphire arcs have a really nice glow up for Mudkip in there that I really enjoy, and uh, I would highly recommend those those manga to anybody. They're currently right behind me as I'm sitting and doing this, so because I do have that for Mudkip, but beyond that, Mudkip is just cool on its own. So I'm gonna give Mudkip a B. That's Gens 1 through 3, and I don't have a single thing less than a B. So that's quite impressive for the first three generations to really have that great energy through them. Going on to Gen 4, this is where I'm going to take a turn. Turtwig is a C for me. I like Turtwig. It's a little basic for me. In terms of a, the turtle starters, I don't think it's anywhere near Squirtle. And I like the, the little seedling idea. I think it's a cool variation and one could argue by personal preference that's a better interpretation of the seedling growth from Turtwig Grotel and Torterra over Chikorita to Meganium. I just like Meganium a lot more and I don't think there's a lot of that's where I think it's a little too similar without being similar enough if that makes any sense for Turtwig to Torterra um, and the shape doesn't change much so that's why I'm going to say Turwig is a C, but it's still a fun Pokemon. Chimchar. Chimchar I like more than any of them at this level. So I'm going to go Chimchar. Yeah, I'm going to go Chimchar up at the A. I think, I think it is the best evolutionary line of Gen 4. I still don't think it has better evolutionary lines than even Mudkip or possibly Charmander. But I think Monferno is very cool and shows a clear different change in energy and growth. And Infernape just has that inherent awesome fighter energy, which I love. And what I like about Chimchar the most, design-wise, is it has that fun mischievous monkey energy to it. But at the same time, it has the fire tail, which is very similar to Charmander. But then it has a more subtle note with the top hair. To give that extra little thing of flames. And this is almost just like kind of like a. Hey just in case you forgot. I am fire type. But th this is enough I think. And I love that for Chimchar. So that's why I got Chimchar up at the A category. Now Piplup. Piplup. I think Piplup is a great Pokemon. But again it's kind of got that Turtwig thing. Where the shapes don't change much. The variation doesn't change much. All that really changes is the two head fins that Prinplup has, and then the three, or if you're following my cursor down here, Empoleon has that beautiful trident beak, which I think is the best 
one of the better design choices by itself, just that. But there's not a lot of variation. Um, I do like how unique Piplup is in as a concept in that you went Penguin. But these three all have a basis that scream water without having to overdo water. It's not like they're spouting water or anything like that. But they all shout, I'm from the water. Piplup doesn't do that. And I think that's because a lot of people, myself included, associate penguins with the snow, not the water. And that's where I'd go. The And the color scheming and the design choices don't give me enough immediate, this thing is a water Pokemon, not an ice type Pokemon. And that's where I'd have Piplup as a B. I still like the line. It's fun, but it's a B for me. But... That's where Gen 4, A, B, and C, a wider variance. Still a good gen, but it's not my favorite. Gen 5 is where I'm going to probably be the most of a heel, and some people are going to really hate me because I know there's some black and white fans out there. Snivy to me, Snivy is a C. So the only thing that has me as a C for Snivy in a positive way, the character design is phenomenal. You get Snivy's energy better than almost any other Pokemon. That is what has the positive. You immediately know that it is a stuck-up, very pretentious Pokemon through the design work, which is genius design work by itself. That, I think, is great. I just don't think it's a very great idea for a starter Pokemon. And on top of that, I hate where it goes with superior i am not a superior fan um i don't think it's a bad pokemon it's just not my cup of tea i really don't it's just not my thing and then it's weird that the internet is very quick to point out especially if you're in meme pokemon meme world that everything starts on fours and goes to twos it's weird that a starter pokemon goes from two down to nothing with superior in terms of limbs I just don't like that concept. I don't like that idea. I think the character work is great there, but I don't think it is a great starter Pokemon personally. So that's why I got Snivy as a C. Tepig is a D. Tepig, here's my biggest thing about it. What about Tepig says fire? Besides, it's orange. This gives me ground type Pokemon. It gives me nothing to say fire type. Where every other starter here, possibly even Torchic, you could argue, I guess... With these little plumes of, you're following my curse to these little plume shoulders, that there's something fiery about Torchic. What does Tepig have to suggest fire? And not even in a subtle way, what does it have at all? It gives me ground type Pokemon. And admittedly, I'm someone, I am a pro wrestling fan. I like Pig Knight's design way more. I'm not crazy about Embor. And they're based off a of pro wrestling, or clearly there's a wrestling influence. And there's nothing there for me with Tepig. And that's why I gotta put Tepig low. Um, I It's a cute Pokemon. I don't, people who like Tepig, more power to you. I don't hate Tepig. I just think as a starter, it's not, it doesn't give anything to say fire starter. And that's why I got Tepig as a D. Meanwhile, as we're going down where I, where I can find my Oshawott here, Oshawott is not a D, I'm just getting it up. Oshawott. I have Oshawa in A. I think Oshawa is tremendous. I have Oshawa here for this reason. Oshawa is very unique evolutionary line in that in the reverse of Snivy, it goes, it takes the Snivy pattern, but in a great way of evolutionary power. Oshawa gives, I'm a friend, I'm nice, I'm cute, I'm adorable. This is something a kid would pick to have its first Pokemon or an adult. I'm not going to narrow those as a kid. And then it grows to Samurott. So if you fall on my cursor down, Samurott feels powerful to a degree. With this awesome horn, with this really sharp mustache look. I love that. And it takes designs and goes all the way through with it. And I love the subtle notes of water and the differing changes in color. With the hint from the shell and this little bubbly neck area or scarf look to Oshawa that suggests water is so smart in my mind and I love that. Oshawa is an A Pokemon and I was very very happy when they announced Pokemon Arceus 
and they said the three starters were Rowlett, Sendequil, and Oshawott. I was like, I don't know if you could give me a more varied group that I could be happier with. I like all three of those, and I love the fact that I didn't play a ton of black and white. I've only really played it through Poke MMO, but I love the fact that I got to play with an Oshawott, and I thought that was really fun. So great choices for Oshawott. It's great. But Gen 5, again, I'm not huge on Gen 5. A D, a C, and an A. And if it's not for Oshawott being great, I don't think Gen... I think no one even could have any, even an argument that Gen 5 is the worst starter group. I think it is just factually the worst. But again, that's you know personal preference. But that's why we're doing the rankings. Going to Gen 6. Gen 6, I am here telling you Gen 6 is... Phenomenal. I don't think it starts well, though. Chespin's a D for me. The most... It has the Tepig problem. It's better than Tepig. Actually, I think Chespin by itself, better than Tepig. Tepig, better evolutionary line per me in my preferences than Chespin, which is why I'll keep them in this order. Chespin has the hints, I guess, of grass from the little quills off its head. And I guess it's supposed to be hedgehog-like or something. But how it gets to chestnut, I'll never understand. It Chestnut, I love the idea behind a chestnut design. It's based off a barbarian RPG character. That sounds like something I would love. But what about chestnut says it is a grass final starter? Nothing. What does Quill Laden say about being grass? Nothing. Except there's a little bit of green. Chespin doesn't even have that much suggestion of grass. And I get it. They're trying to do different things. I appreciate the effort. I just don't think it gives much starter grass energy whatsoever. So Chespin's a D. Meanwhile, Fennekin. That is an S. People might be shocked by that. I think Fennekin is one of the wisest design choices the Pokemon company has ever made. And I say that because of this. The color variation here to include a soft yellow, a dark yellow. I know that's shadowing, but a darker yellow. An orange, a light orange, a dark orange, and a clear red throughout the eyes. And then just this nice hint on the face of the white fur. Suggesting fire everywhere through the flame variation of fire is brilliant. And I love that. And I love the subtlety notes of the flame through the hair plume that's coming from the ears. I adore Fennekin. And I love it because it's cute, it's inviting, and you would th- and you'd pick it as a starter if you saw it. But also on top of that, it's got this mischievous fox vibe. And that fits so well with the idea of fire, that there's mischief that's caused by fire if it's misused. I love that for use for fire Pokemon. I think that's so smart. And that's why I think Fennekin is so great. And also, I'm not one of the people that has a problem with the more gendered, I guess if you want to call it stereotypical gender role, vibe of the starter evolution for Fennekin. I think Braxion is super cool. And I say, and Delphox is also super cool. And I love the interpretation of Delphox as that mage RPG character. I think that's genius. And I think it's a great execution where I don't think... I think it's a great barbarian for Chestnut. I don't think it's a great grass barbarian. Where there's enough fire, even without the wand, to tell you Delphox is a fire starter evolution. Great evolutionary line in my opinion. I don't think it suffers... Some of the online like to think it's got a little too furry vibe or a little too of a sexual sexualized vibe i don't see that with braxton or del fox i think there's some other pokemon that have a way bigger problem with that i'm looking at you low pony but braxton and del fox i adore and i i love the wise choices made with fennekin i adore fennekin and here's what's going to shock you even more i like froki even more than fennekin <laughs> and this is really there's some personal preference here too I think Froakie, again, has those really wise decisions of the subtle notes of bubbles through the scarf. I love the light blue to the yellow eye, and it's looking like there's something deeper behind the surface. It's got the derpy look of a frog, but yet it looks like it has more to give. 
than a traditional derpy Pokemon. Like Totodile, I love Totodile. But I, I'll pull out the classic Llama videos. There's not a thought behind those eyes. It just goes chomp chomp. Froakie look like it's got something to give more than just I like water. And I love that note about Froakie. And let's be honest, Greninja is one of the best designs Pokemon's ever had. And I love how the scarf idea completely changes in a really wise way to evolve. And the colors get subtly darker as you move through. and But they feel natural. The evolutionary line on Froakie is phenomenal, which is the only reason I'll put it over Fennekin. Because I think design-wise, although I like Froakie more... I think Fennekin's probably a better design Pokemon than Froakie, but they're both phenomenal. So Gen 6, I'm clearly a huge fan. I think Gen 6 is one of the best designed generations in general. But if it's not for Chespin, I think you could argue easily it's the best generation of designs. It's just Chespin, I think, takes it down and the whole line takes it down. That's Gen 6. Now going to Gen 7, I'm telling you right now, this is personal bias. Rowlet's my favorite starter. Um... This has a lot of personal bias to it, but I also think there's a lot of argument to say Rowlet's great. Rowlet involves in Decidueye. Decidueye is a Robin Hood owl archer ghost. If you could have told me as a kid, you can have a Robin Hood owl ghost Pokemon, I would have lost my mind. Everything about that screams me my personality, the things I value from stories, from fantasy, everything about that is me to a T. So there is a lot of personal bias with the evolutionary line. But I think it is phenomenal, the design choices made. I really like the difference of a grass starter that flies and is not ground-based. But you look at all these. Bulbasaur, grass, ground-based. Chikorita, ground-based. Turtwig, ground-based. Snivy, ground-based and gets even more ground-based. The closest thing to it, you know, Chespin, ground-based. Trico, at least you could say it's in a tree to a degree, but it gets mostly ground-based. This is up in the air and it's high up and it's very different for a grass starter. I think that's really smart to have an owl grass starter. Second of all, the color scheme roots it towards the ground like a grass starter, but then the subtle tie... This bow tie gives it a really different vibe than any other starter where it looks like a little dapper gentleman, just really fun, inviting, and he just looks like he's happy. And then to go from this little dapper gentleman of what you think a kid would go and then go, you are the ultimate rogue with this decidui look and you go from presenting who I should be to who I am and concealing part of who I am with decidui is so smart. So I can't gush more about Rowlet. I love Rowlet. Continuing Gen 7, Litten is also an S for me. I'm going to put Litten by Eevee. Um, I think Litten has that mischievous nature of fire, like I said with Fennekin. And also, there is not a more mischievous animal on this planet, besides maybe a raccoon, than a cat. A cat is such a smart choice for a fire starter, but in general, a smart choice for a starter Pokemon in general. The two most popular animals on the planet by far are dogs and cats. And the fact that it took this long through the Pokemon franchise to get to just a cat or a dog starter is insane to me. I love Litten. I think the notes are very different throughout Litten, but there's enough suggestion the fire through the whiskers and the subtlety of the eyes with the yellow to the red fur. I think that's great, and it's a different take, and it hits a lot better than some, than some of the more subtlety designs, such as a Chespin, a Tepig, or a Torchic. I think that really hits. And then it's got that mischievous nature to say it's working on something a little nefarious, and then to go to a Pokemon that's literally known as the Heal Pokemon with Incineroar, so smart. Great evolutionary line. I love it. I do wish Cat got a little closer to Incineroar and a little bit further away from Litten, but still I do like Toracat. Incineroar is great, and Litten is just great Pokemon. Now I might surprise some people. I love Popplio. Popplio is an A though. 
Uh, but I love Popolio. I think Popolio, the only reason that Popolio is not more popular is because it's in the same generation as Lytton and Rowlett. That is it. And I think also, beyond that, Primarina is clearly the third for most people between Decidueye and Cinerore and Primarina. But I think it's a great evolutionary line. It's got this fun circus vibe, which is really, really cool. And of all the starter water Pokemon, look. Lighter blue. Lighter blue. Even the dark blue is lighter blue. Lighter blue. Light blue. Light blue. Dark blue. And red in there, which is really cool design choices. I think Popolo is so smart and has a fun, inviting vibe. And clearly, at, you know, if you're the kid in the Pokemon game, if you, fought, if you saw Popolo, you'd want to have Popolo as your friend and your starter. And I love that. And I think it's really cool to have the playful vibe of a performer to go to the more diva-ish design of Primarina. And I love that evolutionary line idea. So with that, I got to put Popolo high. And so I think Gen 7 is... Of the gens that I'm going to... I'll spoil it right now. I think Gen 7 is the best of all the gens in total. I think these two by itself, by themselves could make argument for 6. But 7 as a whole I don't think can be really touched um, for starters. Now we're going to go to Gen 8. This hurts me personally. Um, I like Grookey a lot. I'm going to make this quick switch. I think the character work... For me, we'll take Snivy over Turtwig. But I love Grookey. Grookey by itself should be higher. The problem is it's real boom. I don't like the evolutionary line. And the thing is, we go to Grookey, to Thwacky. I adore Thwacky. I think Thwacky is one of the best middle evolutions of starter Pokemon there is. I love Thwacky. I love Grookey. I don't like real boom. That's what takes it down. I think there's... Su- the the monkey as a grass starter, really good choice. I like that. I like the tide of nature and the tree. I think that's great choices. I love the character work with a Grookey. I think that's really fun. Here's my problem. Grookey to Rillaboom. A, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I get it. They're all mammalian, but... <clears throat> Rillaboom is just such a departure from those two. It, it it has... It's too much of a change for me. Then on top of that, you have this. I was so happy when I got my Grookey through Sword. That was the first one I chose when I played Sword. And then when I got to Thwacky, I'm like, let's go. I, I think Thwacky's awesome. And Thwacky really grew on me. I am a huge punk rock fan. Rillaboom is based off of English punk rock. That's the inspiration behind the idea. And somehow I don't like it. That's just... And Rillaboom by itself, not a bad Pokemon, but very disheartening for me to go from Grookey to Rillaboom. That's why Grookey is a C. I would have Grookey higher, but Rillaboom is a departure and problematic for me. Now, score bunny. It's not a D. I'm just getting it to move up. Score bunny is an A. I'll put it right behind Oshawott. Because of the consistency throughout. Score Bunny is so smart. I love the notes. I love the variation of the ears, which really give a little fire to it. And the animations help Score Bunny a lot with that, especially if you have not played the new Pokemon Snap. Highly recommend just for the animations of Score Bunny. And then there's also some great pre Marina ones that can really explain those Pokemon a little bit more for you. I love Score Bunny. And I think. I am I, there is a bias here. I've been playing. I've played soccer since I was you know eight or nine. I've coached soccer since I was twelve, and you know, I'm now thirty. So I'm two almost two decades of coaching soccer. Score Bunny is a great interpretation of that because it's a kid who's really excited to play soccer. Then it goes to this concealed teen that wants to have teen energy but also wants to be the star of the team. I love that design for Raboot. I think Raboot is great. And then Cinderace is just dope. Cinderace is meant to be a star. And you look at the design and you're like, even if you're not a crazy Cinderace fan, you're like, that Pokemon's a star. And it hits all those notes and the fire is there. doesn't hit you over the head, but you can tell it's fire. 
Love that for the evolutionary line. Score Bunny is an A. And then we're going to Sobble. <sighs> Sobble's a C. I have Sobble over Grookey because I think Inteleon is a great glow up. I, that's just how little I think of Sobble. Sobble by itself, I would probably have in the D. I think Inteleon's a really cool choice and a great redemption for the line. And I also like the idea of Inteleon being inspired by those English spy movies, specifically James Bond and, you know, the spy culture and spy spies and pop culture. I love that as Inteleon. I think it's Gigantamax form is really cool. I think it's, um, it's specialty move is awesome for a spy. Sobble, on the other hand, ugh, it does not have a fun energy of a water type for me. It does give off water vibes. I don't want to say it doesn't. But it just does not have the energy to vibe with me whatsoever. And I, it, it, it personally took me away from that Pokemon. To me, it wasn't even a discussion if I take Sobble. It was, do I take Grookey or Scorbunny? And now if I'm going to do Gen 8, it's Scorbunny all day because I refuse to get a Rillaboom. And I'd rather have the greatness of Scorbunny to Cinderace than deal with Sobble and Drizzile to get to Inteleon. Half the time, we'll just have a friend trade me. But that's Gen 8. I think it's it's not a huge, it's not a bad gen for just starters. But when you're putting evolutionary lines and things into it, too much variance for me. Um, Scorbunny's the highlight. Finally, Gen 9. And, and I do apologize for the length of this video. I hope you are still with me and enjoying it. But here we are, Gen 9. We'll go to Sprigatito first. Again, not a D for me. I'm just getting it up. And I will also start from there. Sprigatito, for me, I will have Sprigs as a B. I think it's better than Torchic for me. I don't know if it's better than Piplup. I like Sprigatito. I think Sprigatito definitely has this great character design of it it says grass all over it without having to hit you in the head that it's a plant or that it's grass and again it's got the genius of it's a cat it's super inviting i like that for sprigatito what i don't like for sprigatito is the same problem i have with all the final evolutions throughout gen 9 sprigatito to meowscarda i'm not crazy about and meowscarda i just don't i don't like it very much. I think it's fine. It's a cool little Pokemon, but it's not It's not great. And I'm going to save a little commentary for Gen 9 as I go through all of these. But I just don't think the evolutionary line is super great. I like Sprigatito. If it was just based off Sprigatito, Sprigatito would be higher. But I think the evolutionary line takes it down for me. Then we go to Foycoco. I'm going to make people mad. Foycoco is a C. Foycoco has a problem with a Rillaboom at the end. I think Foycoco is a perfect, derpy, fun Pokemon. If it was just Foycoco, again, it'd be higher like Sprigatito. Problem is, I hate Skeleturge's design. And the other problem is, I love the concept behind Skeleturge's design. Skeleturge's design of the crocodile with the bird that lives on its nose is great. Especially with that bird made of fire. I adore the color scheme. I think it's great. I'm not crazy about the overall design, but the color scheme is great. I hate that carrot top looking flame on the side of Skeledurge. It bothers me to no end. And I think it really takes the whole line down. And I do think the middle evolution for that line, not tremendous. So that's where Fue Coco is a C. I don't like Fue Coco as much as Sprigatito or Quaxley, but that's personal design. And I can see why people really like Fue Coco. I just don't like Skeledurge and it takes it down for me. Finally, Quaxley. I am going to put Quaxley right next to Sprigatito. I like Quaxley a lot. Those that know me in my personal life, I'm very, very uh, drawn to duck designs and I love a lot of duck Pokemon. Farfetch'd is a favorite of mine. Psyduck is one of my absolute favorite Pokemons, especially as a migraine sufferer. Psyduck is my